Penn State football, a tradition of excellence for over 130 years. Welcome to Nittany Nation Rewind. Some things change and some things stay the same. This imposing structure is not completely lifeless in the summer. They spent years and years building and building. This is the story of the first and maybe the best team to ever get it done. Dan Marino and Pitt, we played Nebraska, we played Notre Dame, at Notre Dame we played uh, we played them all. We played Boston College and Doug Flutie up there. They were not perfect. I think we had some luck. Maybe they had some luck. But they were champions. Going for the bundle. Garrity. Touchdown. Three, two, one. And State wins it. So many things have to go right to win a championship. We were really, really a close group of fellas. Rowing in the same direction. Nittany Nation Rewind starts right now. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. I'm Peter Terpstra, standing on a box. Two boxes. Two boxes. And I'm Jack Washer. We'll save the short jokes for later. Sorry, yep, Peter. that's real. Because right now we have to tell you a championship tale. So many Penn State teams came close, but this one was the first to get it done. We bring you the story of the 1982 Penn State football team. It will forever be the team that brought home Penn State's first national championship and what a year it was. The 1982 season started with promise. The team had a win uh, over rival Temple. They held off Boomer Esiason and the Maryland Terps, and they blew out Rutgers to move to 3-0. That set the stage for the Huskers to come to town. On a late September afternoon, Penn State began its gauntlet of opponents when second-ranked Nebraska and the legendary Tom Osborne Waltz in the Happy Valley. Blackledge play action. The Nittany Lions controlled the pace of the game twice, storming out to a 14-point lead. Blackledge on second down and eight over the middle. And it is caught for the touchdown. But each time, Nebraska punched right back and would take a 24-21 lead with less than two minutes to play, setting the table for a drive to remember. Be in that huddle. We had to go you know, the length of the field and have Todd Blackledge uh, call, you know, the calmness, the focus, the, hey, you know, let's, this is it. This is what we came to Penn State for. With just 13 seconds left and Penn State at the Nebraska 17, chaos ensued. So many things have to go right to win a championship. There were some controversial calls, allegedly. Todd Blackledge hit Mike McCloskey at the two-yard line. Or did he? As I say to everybody, the ref said I was. I've seen the diagrams of the Penn State field that friends have made fun of, you know, with it, where it sticks out in a couple different places along the sidelines. I don't think it's as big a stretch as some people might think that I was in bounds because I was dragging my back foot. But yeah, I'll, you know, <laughs> you know, why not? I'll say I was in. One play later, Blackledge found Kirk Bowman as Bedlam broke out at Beaver Stadium. Penn State winners 27 to 24. That last drive to win the game at home and to go, ahead, go out there and do it um, is something I'll never forget. So Penn State immediately had a bye week after that win. The team was riding high, just took down the number two team in the country. Penn State actually bumped up to number three during the bye week and had to head to the Simi South for its next game in Birmingham, Alabama. This game should be something. Legion Field. Penn State walked into the house of the Bear, Paul Bear Bryant, and fourth-ranked Alabama, a game the Nittany Lions quickly knew they were in for a long day. You've got to face adversity, whether it's a football season or in life. The frustration we had there was Despite all the mistakes we made, we were only trailing in that game 27 to 21 with about six minutes left. But then the floodgates opened. Oh, he hit his own man! Patrick to the five, touchdown! Blackledge back. Mikulski did say it is picked off by Lowe. Eddie Lowe. Lowe to the five, touchdown! Penn State suffered its first loss of the season, 42 to 21. 
but it's what happened afterwards that would change the course of the season. The decisive moment of that season was in that locker room at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, we were humiliated. And at that point in time, with the leadership of, in particular, I remember Joel Coles gave one of the most fiery, emotional um, speeches in the locker room saying, this is not over. Joel's words really were impactful. We came back from uh, Birmingham determined to, to go to work that following Monday. and. And it uh, and unfolded under, after that. And it was also Bear Bryant's final year coaching at Alabama. They have a, an excellent football team. I don't really, I know how good they are. I don't like good we are. Uh, I think that uh, both sides had a lot of big plays. And uh, I think we had some luck. And maybe they had some luck. I understand you're a contestant in the Joe Paterno Lookalike contest. I am Joe Paterno. <laughs> Coming up next, even the tailgating was serious. Sometimes you have to throw down in the parking lot, too. That's next. Plus, one verse two in New Orleans. We bring you the catch and what happened next. For over 40 years, Joel Confer Toyota has provided the utmost customer service while serving local communities. Stop in today and let Alan Hall use his 44 years of experience to help you find your new Toyota vehicle. Log in today at joelconfer.com or visit our showroom at Joel Confer Toyota of State College. The sun is still shining. The waves keep rolling in. And the beach is waiting. We love being outside with the sun on our face and our toes in the sand. Myrtle Beach is 60 miles of wide open beaches with good times, great people, and plenty of space to find your place and get back to what matters most. We belong at the beach. When you're ready, we're ready. Visit Myrtle Beach. Violence in the streets. It was terrifying because there were riots going on up in DC, into Arlington. Controversy in the schools. My wife and I, we, we hold to conservative values and we value faith in our home. And the COVID lockdown. They'll tell me right out of the gate, um, I'm working remotely. There's nothing keeping me in the area. Life in the big city is changing. How are Americans responding? On the 700 Club Monday. Think you know FanDuel? Well, what if we told you that we've got an ace up our sleeve? Introducing FanDuel Casino. Now you can play casino games like blackjack, roulette, and online slots for real cash right from your FanDuel Sportsbook app. So when we say there's more ways to win on FanDuel, you can take that to the bank. New casino players, play your first 24 hours risk-free on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Get up to $200 back. Hi, I'm Carrie Confer. You know, I've driven Toyota trucks most of my life. Silly boys, trucks are for girls. Come see us at Joel Confer Toyota. Joel Confer Toyota in State College. Toyota, let's go places. Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. I'm Jack Washer and I'm tall. And I'm Peter Terpstra and I'm short. But you look tall in the, on those boxes. On double boxes. Yeah. And you know what I like? Short football players. Yes, you right? do. It's time to talk about the best shrimpy gunslinging quarterback yeah. around. It isn't a question how much yardage you give up. It's a question how many points. We, we, a kid who wants to throw the ball like that, fine. And then we got ahead, and we didn't put any pressure on him the second half. We just figured he wants to throw the ball, fine. We, weren't, we just weren't going to give him a bomb. You know who we're talking about. We're talking about Doug Flutie when he was at Boston College playing quarterback for them. Penn State bounced back from its first loss by taking down Syracuse, number 13, West Virginia, Flutie in Boston College, and number 13, Notre Dame. That set up a rematch. Number two, Penn State, and number five, rival, Pittsburgh in Happy Valley. Penn State blew out the Panthers the year before. Dan Marino and Pitt wanted revenge, and they would not get it. Kurt Warner starred, and Penn State prevailed. 19 to 10, that locked in a spot in what would be the national championship game. Welcome to New Orleans, 
Welcome to the Sugar Bowl. Welcome to the national championship between Herschel Walker and the Georgia Bulldogs and the underdogs, Penn State. Penn State was holding on to a three-point lead to start the fourth quarter, and then you had the catch. It's almost 38 years ago, so I don't, <laughs> I'd like to say I remember all the details, but I don't. Going for the bundle, Garrity, touchdown! Todd Blackledge threw a perfect ball. Greg Garrity made a perfect catch. Laid out for a photo and a touchdown that will live on forever. I had a bird's eye view of that because I didn't block anybody on that play. It's always Blackledge to Garrity, cover Sports Illustrated. Not once did they mention Battaglia to Blackledge to Garrity. I mean, it, that play wouldn't have happened without me. Garrity would also pick up a key first down to seal the deal later in the game. Penn State would hold on and hold off Herschel Walker to take home the school's first national title, 27 to 23. I think at the very end of the game, it started to, uh, you know, after that uh, loss, uh, struck four, you know, in Fran Fisher's epic, you know, Penn State national champion. It, it started to sink in, I think, on the drive home once we landed in Harrisburg uh, the following night and that 90-mile parade from Harrisburg on Route 322, it really dawned on us what this meant to so many people and the fact that we had achieved something that Penn State had, uh, had really uh, fought so hard for for so many years only to come up short. Ooh, goosebumps. So how good was this Penn State team? Now you can make the argument that this was the best Penn State team ever. I feel like we've said that before on this show, but look at this. Years before 1982, Penn State moved away from its traditional Eastern schedule and started playing a national schedule, and this played into its ability to win a national championship. Penn State played six ranked teams in 1982, and they beat everyone except for Alabama, as you saw, and they made plenty of mistakes in that game. They also beat Maryland, led by Boomer Esiason, and Maryland would finish the season ranked. So maybe there's seven ranked teams in there. Yeah, and also helped that Penn State had a guy named Todd Blackledge, legendary Penn State quarterback. But people forget he was not a clear-cut starter his entire career at Penn State. He actually took over as a starter midway through the 1980 season as a sophomore. And in 1982, he had his best year by far. More than 2,000 yards passing, which in 1982, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. 22 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He actually threw more interceptions than touchdowns in his first two years as a starter. And until his senior season, well, that just was the kind of the way things went. You saw how it worked out. Yeah. So we have all done some silly things on camera, some more than others. That's me. I've done a lot of silly yeah. things on camera. <laughs> we found some hidden gems when we were digging through the archives this time around. So let's take this a little bit of time to just sit back and enjoy. Understand you're a contestant in the Joe Paterno Lookalike Contest. I am Joe Paterno. <laughs> what are you doing here before the game? Scouting out this tough West Virginia team. Just slither it right slither down. Slither it right down. <laughs> it's going to kill me? Down. I've got to tell you, you're not supposed to chew it. Mm. Oh, if you swallow it, that's why it goes right down. Different. <laughs> Different. <laughs> but good. Man, nothing like raw oysters in the morning. <laughs> oysters are good watching someone eat oysters. Not good, Pete. Yeah, hopefully you weren't eating when you were watching no, that no. Breakfast of Champions. Now, the 1982 team had plenty of guys that went on to have interesting lives and interesting playing careers. It's time for Where Are They Now? Do, do, do. And of course, we start with QB1, Todd Blackledge. Blackledge went number seven overall in the legendary 1983 NFL draft, which included John Elway, Eric Dickerson, Jim Kelly, and Dan Marino. Blackledge had a seven-year NFL career. He was drafted by Kansas City, five years there, two with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, he went 15 and 14 as a starter, his NFL career not as good as his broadcasting career has been, right? He made magic with the microphone after he started in radio in Ohio. He started working as a college football analyst in 1994, and he is currently working with ESPN as a college football analyst. And you've probably seen him on some of the Penn State football broadcasts. Nothing like a little hometown broadcast. Mm -hmm. Now for lineman Bill Kantz. He played six seasons in the NFL with the Browns and Saints. He currently lives in the Pittsburgh area. He traded in his talents as an offensive tackle for storytelling. Kantz wrote a book titled When the Lions Roar, Joe Paterno and one of college football's greatest teams. We use it as research in kind of our, you know, 
quote unquote, baseline yep. for the show. Now for Whiteout, Greg Garrity. He's living in a Pittsburgh suburb. His daughter Samantha is an elementary is an elementary school teacher, excuse me, and his son Greg Jr. graduated from Penn State in 2016. He played actually played on the Big Ten championship team as a wide receiver, just like his dad. Now for Michael Zordage, if you remember, he was just a freshman in 1982, right? And he was able to play as a true freshman at Penn State. He finished his career as a first team All-American years later. He was as a senior, a first team All-American. Now he finishes a team captain as well. He ended up marrying a Penn State cheerleader. He played 12 years in the NFL and then his coaching career started with the Philadelphia Eagles. Then he went to Youngstown State and now he is the defensive backs coach at Michigan. His son, also named Michael Zordich, was a captain on the 2012 Penn State football team as well. Coming up next, he was a star on the 82 Penn State team and he was a star in the NFL, but He's making an impact at home with his family. Hey man, I'm down here at Beer Bellas Beverage. Uh, what are you thinking about tonight? How about some Dos Equis? Or hey, how about some good old Bud Light? That's always good for game day. No, how about some Guinness then? Come on man, I can't name all the beers they've got here. They've got over 500. With over 500 options, we know it's hard to choose. But whatever you're in the mood for, Beer Bellies has the beer for it. Located in Hamilton Square Shopping Center, State College, PA. At Patterson Automotive, we're under new ownership, new management, and we have a new way of doing business. We're proud to treat our customers and employees the way they should be treated, like family. Come by to see our multiple showrooms and say hello or shop online. Whether you're looking for new and used cars or scheduled maintenance, from sales to service, at Patterson Automotive, you're our Patterson priority. Your news every hour in primetime is on News Nation on WGN America. News Nation was live in Louisville after the release of the grand jury recordings. And we had an exclusive interview with Dr. Deborah Burks on how she says children could safely return to school. The virus comes in from the community. News Nation covers your nation every night starting at 8, 7 central on WGN America. Go to WGNAmerica.com to find WGN America on your cable or satellite provider. I uh, got married, became a therapist, have a beautiful daughter. Ah, oh, kids are great. Can you prescribe drugs? I have friends, just not the kind that, you know, care about me. I'm in a little bit of trouble. I was hoping I could stay here for a couple days. What kind of trouble? I don't remember, and it's bad. Drew? Gina. Guess who's getting a kidney? Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. All right, welcome back to the show. Well, he was one of the top players in Penn State history, but he might be making his mark on the world at home with his family. Our Nittany Nation's Casey Kantz has a story. For a program commonly known for pumping out great linebackers, Penn State has also had an incredible list of great running backs. None more dominant in his day than two-time All-American Kurt Warner. Running with incredible vision and purpose, Warner rushed for back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons his junior and senior years, a major force that helped the one-loss Nittany Lions to the 82 national title. You can lose once to win a national championship. You can't lose twice and win a national championship. And unfortunately, we did that in 81, where I thought we probably had as good a football team as I've ever been around. Kurt's 117 yards and two touchdowns against top-ranked Georgia capped off a record-setting collegiate career, one that would pave the way for a successful professional run. I was alerted to the fact that uh, I was going to get drafted uh, number, number three probably a day, maybe two days prior to that, uh, where uh, the Seahawks decided to, to move up, I think nine, eight, nine spots uh, to, uh, to pick me uh, mm -hmm. third. So, you know, 
there there were expectations and, and, and I felt the pressure. Warner would go number three to Seattle, picked right behind future Hall of Famers John Elway and Eric Dickerson in the 83 draft, a seven-year career that included three trips to the Pro Bowl. But it's what happened after his career was over that he takes the most pride in, his family. He and his wife, Anna, have raised four kids, including two twin boys, Austin and Christian, who suffer from severe autism. They are 26 years old, uh, big, tall, a uh, young man, but mm -hmm. with the mentality of seven, yeah, yeah seven yeah. years old, um, um, they still need 24 hour care. Um, yeah. So it, it continues, it has gotten a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, that's something that, at least for us, uh, it hasn't, they haven't recovered. Austin and Christian's condition and how they handle it as a family prompted Kurt and Anna to write a book, one that they hope will help other families dealing with the same things. Uh, it's real. Um, no, we didn't. We yeah, didn't so it's just uh, all this stuff that we went through and still going through. Um, so it, it just is not a how-to book. We are not teaching anybody on. Uh, yeah, it's not a how-to. We don't talk about, you know, uh, a lot of the therapies or treatments that we have used because that that's not our um, that's not our position to come and tell you, well, you know, do this because this is going to work because it work what works for one kid might not work for yeah. another. So it was really just telling uh, our, our the story. world our story. And Anna recalls a special moment in 2009 at Kurt's college football induction ceremony in New York where she was approached by the late Joe Paterno. Joe came to us and said that if we were ever in uh, State College to From bring, college. yeah, to bring the, the boys that him and his wife could take care of them so we mm. can go out and do something. Wow. I mean, that is, that was his heart. Special family, special yes. coach, just yes. wonderful people to yes. uh, be affiliated with. Certainly, and I'm and I'm very happy that uh, I made that decision to to do that mm -hmm. to go to Penn State University. When Kurt left Penn State, he held over 40 school records. His career rushing record wasn't broken until 2010. The legacy he left behind will forever live on in Penn State history. For Nittany Nation Rewind, I'm Casey Cants. All right, thanks, Casey. That book is called The Warner Boys, Our Family's Story of Autism and Hope, and it's currently on sale at Amazon. Coming up next, before it was title time, Penn State went plenty of years with no losses, but no championships either. We'll see you soon. Violence in the streets. It was terrifying because there were riots going on up in D.C., into Arlington. Controversy in the schools. My wife and I, we, we hold to conservative values and we value faith in our home. And the COVID lockdown. They'll tell me right out of the gate, um, I'm working remotely. There's nothing keeping me in the area. Life in the big city is changing. How are Americans responding? On the 700 Club Monday. With advanced technology available in the Nissan Rogue, you'll be equipped to help protect the moments that matter most. This is tech that gives you confidence. Save $2,500 on Rogue or get 0% financing for up to 84 months on 14 models. Your favorite casino games are just a few taps away. Find FanDuel Casino right inside your FanDuel Sportsbook app. Join FanDuel Casino today to play your first 24 hours risk-free and get up to $200 back on anything you lose. The world's greatest economy is coming back. But Joe Biden could wreck it. I would shut it down. Shut it down or worse. Guess what, if you elect me, you're not gonna have your, your taxes are gonna be raised, not cut. 
Joe Biden will kill your jobs and raise your taxes. I'd, I'd make the changes on day one. Joe Biden uh, is a job-killing, uh, tax-raising disaster. With, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, the man uh, just doesn't have a clue. Uh, America First uh, Action is responsible uh, for the content of this advertising. Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back. Penn State has 13 undefeated seasons, dating all the way back to 1887, but only two national championships. That's a whole lot of wins without a whole lot of hardware. Let's give you a sneak peek on what you can expect next week on Nittany Nation Rewind. Get all the men on defense. Shoot. That's part of the Third down and uh, you gotta run, you'll get hurt if you don't. That is part of a video played at a team reunion reliving the 1968 and 69 seasons. Penn State went 11 and 0 both years and finished number two in the final AP poll both years. Next week, we'll take a look at those years and more. I love that old video. Joe Paterno uh, in the 60s. We've, we found some just gems. Uh, we want to take some time to thank some of the folks that uh, did interviews with us, um, helped us out with this show. Obviously, Bill Kantz and his oh, yeah. book uh, it were, was a big help. Mark Battaglia, uh, the center from that team. Um, you saw the story with Kurt and Anna Warner, of course, and yep. uh, Mike McCloskey mm -hmm. tied in on that team. He was in bounds. Also, big shout out to the Mace family in Harrisburg. Greg Mace yep. was a fixture in the sports scene there for years and years and actually helped us with a lot of the video mm -hmm. for this season. Yep. And Peter, this was arguably, in Bill Kotz's book, you know, laid it out, the greatest team in college football history. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, hyperbole. Look at the teams they played. Mm -hmm. Look where they finished. Yep. And, and it's I mean, not it's not just the team. Some of the names yeah. of the people they built, right? They beat 81 and 82, Dan Marino, Boomer Sice, and Doug Flutie. The list goes on and on and on. Folks, that's going to do it for this episode of Nittany Nation Rewind. We'll see you next week.